the Boston Marathon, the most famous road race in America. For some, the ultimate test of endurance. But where does that ability to endure come from? What's the physiological difference between those that can run over 26 miles and those that can only watch in awe? Can an average person standing on the sidelines be transformed into an athlete crossing the finish line? Nova intends to find out. Chosen from hundreds of applicants, these are the participants in a real life experiment. They come from all walks of life, but share a common dream, to run the Boston Marathon. To make sure the runners get off their seats safely, Nova collects some baseline health information. As Sama runs on a treadmill, her exhaled breath is captured by a mouthpiece and then analyzed for oxygen content, revealing how much oxygen she's using. In about 30 seconds, I'm gonna increase that incline in the speed, okay? The goal is to find the maximum rate that Sama's body can consume oxygen, her VO2 max. VO2 max is really the, the measure of the person's body's ability to extract and utilize oxygen during exercise. And it's the best measure we have of a person's cardiovascular or aerobic fitness. How you doing, all right? Good. Here's why. To run, your leg muscles must continually contract and relax. The source of the movement lies deep inside each muscle cell, where tiny proteins grab and release each other. But each grab and release requires energy. This energy comes mainly from fat and carbohydrate mixed with oxygen. Keep going, you're doing great. great job. Good job. So to keep running, Sama's body must move large amounts of oxygenated blood from her lungs all the way to those tiny filaments inside each muscle cell. When we measure somebody's VO2 max, it's a very interesting number because it is really complicated and there are a lot of different factors. So it's how well the heart is beating. It's how well the vessels are expanding, how elastic they are how many capillaries there are to bring the oxygenated blood to the muscles. So it's one number that shows us an overall good health of the entire cardiovascular system. Stop, stop. OK, slow it down. Stop right here. OK. Right. You're a little bit below what we think of for the average. But one of the things that determines this is really how much physical activity you get, how much exercise you do. OK. So as you become more fit and, and do more training, we would expect this the VO2 max value to go up, to increase. I see. The team's first run was two miles. By the fall, they were at five. December, 10. When we look at the gains from July to December when they ran the 10 mile run, I believe that probably 90% of the fitness happened in that time period for most of the Nova team. What's happened? What's changed? The runner's hearts are more efficient, filling up faster between beats and pumping more blood with less energy. They might even be slightly bigger. Certainly, the heart is working a bit better. But by far, the majority of the changes are happening with the vessels, the plumbing of the body. Arteries and veins have become more elastic, easing blood flow. And down at the level of the muscle cell itself, there are more tiny capillaries, meaning faster delivery of oxygen. Even inside the cell, energy production has been ramped up by mitochondria, the structures that transform fat, carbohydrate, and oxygen into energy. As you become more and more trained, the muscle actually starts making more mitochondria and also making them larger so that they can actually process and break down more fuels for energy. From their hearts to the tiniest enzymes in their cells, these bodies were transformed. The human body is an amazing organism. 
And what we see is that when you don't use things, you lose that body tissue. The first day that you go out and exercise, you are healthier than the day before because the body all of a sudden realizes, oh, I've got to use those muscles. I have to make them stronger. I have to make them fitter. I have to make them so that I can cover more ground. So it's a survival mechanism that our body is responsive to the demands that we put upon it.